So I think we're, we're, we're probably pretty good to start now. Uh, so welcome to the solar panel uh, discussion. Um, as many of you know, renewable energy is, um, is quite a positive trend that's happening in our First Nation communities. Um, and now we have, do have a panel of um, professionals here, um, experience-wise. <laughs> I must say, say very much so. A uh, panel of professionals who have uh, been dealing with the basics um, with solar panel as well as uh, stories and experiences. Um, so I'm just going to introduce from the, the left to the right. So Brian Walmark, he's with NCC Development, Front Seibel with Northern Chiefs Council, and I do have David Jeremiah, Jeremiah from North Caribou, and uh, Rupa Rakshit from Lakehead. Perfect. So I'll let them go ahead. Thank you, Armanda. So we were, we were told that we have to use a microphone for the, for the camera, and it's probably best. You can hear us OK in the room? Yeah. OK. So my name is Franz, and our idea was that we would share a little bit about how the communities get from uh, understanding renewables from their perspective to getting into discussions about how they would want to do a, a renewable project in their community. So we're staying away from, for the most part, all the technical aspects of building and regulations and that kind of thing. However, if you do have questions about that, there's some people here and in the audience as well who are aware of those technical details. So depending on where your community is at uh, in the process, uh, hopefully you can get something out of it, but we're going to be focusing mostly on um, how a community gets to a point where they would like to do a renewable project, because there's some who are who are not there, and um, we have so we have Rupa is uh, with us from Lakehead University, and she has experience from around the world, different places in the world about how that has happened, uh, as well as David. Uh, we just asked him to share from his his uh, from the heart from his community. Uh, where his community is at. And then Brian Walmark, who has done, uh, visited some communities to uh, answer those types of questions that people have in open houses and um, do uh, technical development right uh, from start to finish. And also we have a, a special guest with us, Bob from Hydro One, who uh, we've invited as well, who knows about the technical details in uh, Hydro One communities. And he's gonna share a little bit at the end about some of their programs. Uh, so I'm going to invite Rupa. Uh, she came with me to Poplar Hill First Nation, and we were invited there by the chief because the chief said uh, there's some solar panels at the airport, and they're all pointed in different directions for some reason. And every time we get on the plane, people look at the panels and say solar doesn't work. So we would like to know in our community how to get to the point uh, where we understand renewables and where we can decide on what, what, what is best for our community as a renewable project. So Rupa, um, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, does, that, does that make sense? I'm trying to explain as a, where, what we're going to do here and why we're going to do it. OK, and we also, we also have a survey, which um, maybe as things drag on, we can, we'll get you up. And uh, Rupa's idea was kind of fun, I thought. You can go to the back and put your stickers on where you would answer the survey. Or if you're not able to, we also have a survey you can sit at your desk. But we're not going to let Andrew do that. He's going to have to get up and go to the wall. OK. There's comments there, yeah. And we'll take breaks. We'll, keep, we'll take those kind of breaks to make it fun. OK. Rupa, you're up. Thank you. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Seize the, re uh, seize the renewable power. So we're chronicling our energy path, and we are at crossroads. We can follow the short-term economic gain associated with continued reliance on power generated from diesel, or we can chart a path with green sources of renewable energy. You can hear me, yeah, I guess? Can you hear me? 
Hey, okay? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Just after lunch. <laughs> so by adopting measures that could minimize our footprints on land, waters, wildlife, and fishery. I don't have to stress, we've heard our elders this morning, our respected elders who told us the value of the land, the earth, the environment. So, technology. So we still have a choice. Before we delve further, let us uh, understand renewable energy very briefly. They are the forms of energy obtained from naturally repetitive and persistent flows of energy in the local environment. An obvious example is solar energy. Sun shines on us persistently and repetitively. How beautiful it is to enjoy this, <laughs> this beautiful, sunny, warm fall. Similarly, wind, water, river, and the abandoned supply of wood from our virgin forests. They are our clean and green energy sources. In today's modern economies, it's being increasingly recognized that renewable energy are necessary for sustainability, security, and better standard of living. We are still trying to understand the meaning of the word sustainability. It means different things to different people. In contrast, non-renewable energy is energy obtained from static sources of energy that remain underground unless released by human. Examples being coal, oil, natural gas, nuclear fuels, often called the brown energy. So why renewable energy for remote northern communities? Inadequate energy generation transmission, off-grid status, distribution affect all aspects of northern communities' lives. The existing diesel systems are expensive, environmentally damaging, and are often unable to meet the current energy needs. Furthermore, diesel fuel consumption has inherent negative effects of emissions during operation, fuel transportation, and potential fuel leaks. Fuel transportation logistics are cumbersome and costly since the communities can only be accessed by limited winter roads or year-round by air. Engaging with renewable energy to support or complement existing energy systems and reduce diesel fuel dependency could enhance local economies and resource development. Climate impacts, we heard experts in the morning, um, and there is no end to and This is the time for us to work towards it. So many northern communities rely on ice roads during a brief window of time in the winter season to transport fuel. If climate change progresses significantly, and science proves that it does, the reliability of these routes may be threatened. Furthermore, ecosystems and wildlife are also affected by climate change. Climate change can have unpredictable and far-reaching environmental, social, economic consequences potentially affecting our resources. And it's time that we include climate change in all our plans, in all our environmental feasible energy plans. Cultural values. The earth and its environment play a strong and direct role in the spiritual and cultural values for many of us. There is also a strong dependence on the land, water, and the natural resources that they sustain. These values are consistent with the goals of energy conservation, efficiency, renewable energy, and sustainability. It's perhaps for these reasons that many First Nation communities have pursued innovative projects of this nature. Energy uh, engagement with renewable energy in the remote communities is growing in numbers and in capital investment, as can be seen in this graphic representation. Since around 1980s, First Nation communities began to consider renewable opportunities to revitalize local economies. Several pioneering communities, um, through effective and efficient partnerships and visionary leaderships, have started making active and significant renewable energy developments. Any way you add up the achievements or investments, earnings, and associated economic multipliers, they reflect promises of many fold returns, be it economic or a sustainable environment. Yeah, the next two slides will get a prize if you can read all of this in the next few seconds. Well, no, I'm not expecting you to do that. It's just to explain the range of benefits uh, in that includes enhanced economies with annual royalties, granted or purchased equity, profit sharing, and employment targets 
additionally reduced environmental impacts, and needless to say, capacity, capability, and our confidence. So in the next four slides, uh, let's briefly talk about renewable energy with more um, visible footprints like the solar energy. One of the most popular acceptable source of renewable energy and is generated when photovoltaic cells convert heat from the sun into electricity. It's non-polluting, most abandoned energy source available, and a planned system will last about 15 to 30 years, and with technology improving every day, maybe more. It can be connected to the grid or can be stored in batteries. I have a miniature demonstration kit here, and uh, we can play around with this uh, after we are uh, after our presentations. And this is the kit. I take it to the communities to explain and talk to them about solar panels and solar energy. Hydroelectric power is generated when flowing water turns turbines to run generators that convert energy into electricity. In smaller scale, they are called the run of the river projects that are increasingly being considered by First Nation remote communities that have rapids or free flowing rivers in the areas. Benefits, no emissions, reliable, capable of generating large amounts of power, Outputs can be regulated to meet demand. Run of the river have minimal environmental impacts that can be mitigated with proper consultation with elders, local communities, GIS mapping, and efficient feasibilities. Wind power is generated when wind turbine to, uh, turbines to run the generators that convert energy into electricity, which is then stored in batteries. Benefits, no emissions, little disruption of ecosystems, relatively high uh, output, which is proportional to the wind speed. Not feasible for all geographic locations. High initial investment, extensive land use, and social acceptability of this technology is still a challenge. Biomass, another most promising renewable energy source. It's produced from byproducts of plant, agricultural, and forestry processing, or industrial and human waste. Abandoned supply, those source must be near usage to cut transportation cost, fewer emissions than fossil fuel sources. The next two slides highlight some renewable energy success stories from the communities that have been piloted, tried, and tested for various purposes, from lighting to heating to communications to industrial purposes. However, Renewable energy system is not one size fits all. No single renewable energy system is universally applicable since the ability of local environment to supply the energy source and the suitability of the community to accept the energy system vary greatly. It's necessary to prospect our local surrounding for the most suitable energy sources to look at potentials from our climate and natural resources. A comprehensive feasibility plan is a must. An energy profile with baseline data of energy consumption pattern and user requirement energy generation data makes for a functional energy planning and management. Like I mentioned, a comprehensive feasibility plan is a must. So these slides were highlighting some of the um, various renewable energy projects that have been tried in various communities. And we'll hear some from our uh, friends here. So in association with Nan and uh, Corey, this is uh, my study, and I'm doing my PhD with Lakehead University's Natural Resources Management School. My advisor is Dr. Chandra Shah, he is a socioeconomic uh, expert, and my committee members are Dr. Peggy Smith and Dr. Adam Conwell, who come with the different uh, um, areas of expertise and experience. My topic of uh, um, study is assessment of environmental and socioeconomic conditions for sustainable renewable energy initiatives in remote First Na Nation communities, and I have um, added the cultural aspect of it too. So my overall purpose of uh, the research study is um, socioeconomic, cultural drivers and indicators, exploring and examining community perspectives, for realistic and affordable and profitable renewable energy solutions, the role of the community in the decision-making process in the energy mix development, and uh, to do some energy framework and guidelines. Um, more specific, 
capacity building, awareness, information, and knowledge sharing tool development are integral to this study. So this is uh, my community visits. This summer I had the wonderful opportunity to visit two communities, Poplar Hill and Round Lake. And I'm very, very grateful to Franz and David, uh, my research and community partners. And together we organized open houses, radio talks, community engagement session, raising awareness with demonstration kits, posters, video animations, arts and craft, and uh, beading. I've learned to bead. <laughs> Then uh, we had the afternoons with kids, the young curious minds, what better way to raise awareness. Final word, to be sustainable through three key pillars, socio, economic, and environmental, a balance that calls for action from all of us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Ruba. So we had a great time, uh, as I recall, with uh, in uh, in Poplar Hill, and having a student is great for us at, at Northern Chiefs. It's like having a free consultant. Rupa is uh, charming and smart, and she's willing to come to the communities. So I'd encourage if anybody's looking for a free consultant, visit your local university, and. Um, <laughs> Rupa mentioned some of the things that we did do in Poplar Hill, and, and um, another thing we did, the chief asked us to buy some of these solar chargers, and people that go out on the land want to charge their phones, uh, which they use for cameras and for communication. So that's another way that we were able to just let people try it out. This is renewables, here's renewables. Uh, your kids can tell you about renewables, you can hear about it on the radio. Oh, it works. <laughs> we have charged this, the solar panel, and then this is the demonstration kit. It's very, very simple and nice. We also talked to them about windmills with this, with the dollar store pin bills that I carry with me and give it to the children and make them, you know, with the arts and craft. And these are some of the biomass wood pellets that we show to them. So if your community is at a place where you're not sure uh, what renewables are all about, what it means to you, what's, what, what type would be correct for your community, um, this is the kind of community engagement that we're sharing with you that we've tried. And another thing that Rupa and I would like to do is to make a, an animation project, an animation tool and some online tools in the language that tell a better story from, uh, from our remote communities what renewables means to you, and then we can share that uh, with everyone. So we're hoping to do that in the next couple months. We do have some funding to do that. So, David, if you want to share with us uh, from your perspective. I have a very passionate, <laughs> I was very, very lucky to get to know David. And uh, when you hear him and his passion to do things for the community, he has lots of ideas. And we are all here to support and um, yeah, make those uh, dreams uh, reality. Yeah. Oh, I uh, good afternoon. Um, I, uh, I, I met. Um, okay, my name is David Jeremiah from North Garbo, uh, Weagmo, Round Lake, uh, or uh, Nana and Daongang. They called for uh, original, the original name for it, which was uh, a summer gathering place for for people. Well, this job I, I played for the last last uh, last summer, um, and it was uh, energy coordinator. This um, this energy coordinator position was um, had been applied for by uh, um, Robert Taylor, uh, passed away. He's rest in peace, sir. Um, when the tribal council, he applied to the Ontario Power Authority, which is ISO now. Um, so, so I, I got the job, um, actually a, a month prior to applying for this job, I ran in the band, band election in uh, my community. It was, um, and my main point in that my platform was uh, renewable energy. So, and uh, I, I came in second in that 
there was five five votes shy for getting in. So so I got the job. Yeah, that was my platform is renewable energy. So but I, I got I got it and um so I started I started that job. I, I had no idea. I uh I went to work that first day on August 18. I had no idea what I was gonna do. I had no information. I had no desk. I had no computer to uh, my job. So the human resources lady came up to me and said, uh, "Why don't you do some research on um, renewable energy?" So I asked the smartest person I know is Google on the <laughs> computer. <laughs> And I punched in um, solar, and boom, so, so many things came up, and it's like very, very expansive. But they, and then I, I finally got um, the job description and, and who to contact at Windigo. So I phoned Windigo, and they gave me a whole bunch of stuff to do just right off the bat. And one of the main things that I worked on is um, asset collection. It's called band asset collection to see how much. Uh, my band spent on hydro bills and and uh, have have when I did all that stuff, it was a, it was mind boggling because the numbers were, were crazy, like a million dollars just just on hydro bills, and that and that's only just hydro. That's not even uh, taking care of the heat because we got oil heat for half of the community and and uh, band owned assets do use oil so. You think about it, that's maybe two million towards that could go elsewhere in the program, see? So anyway, um, once, I, once I had that program, uh, once I understood that, I uh, was quite shocked, really. And then, um, and, I, and, I, and I came, my first one, my first <coughs> event, I came here to this conference is not from now last year. It was upstairs, I was listening to, uh, uh, Mitch Diabo from Casablanca and uh, Carnos Carnassius, University of Waterloo. They were talking about uh, the renewable projects in their community. And I asked myself, sitting there in the back, I was like, sitting way in the back. They said, what am I doing here? Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, but the more and more I listened, the more and more it became very clear that, you know, it needs, <laughs> My community needs all this stuff that uh, I was hearing. So, and I thought someday, man, someday I wouldn't be standing up there talking. Didn't know it was going to be one year. <laughs> anyway, um, so 